fifth hour. This hour has a vertical axis, with the head of Auset in the center, surmounting the pyramid-shaped mound of the lower register. Introduction This great Nutyar is towed along the proper ways of the Duat, in the upper half of the secret cavern of Sokar upon his sand. Invisible and imperishable is this secret image of the land which bears the flesh of this Nutyar. Those among whom this Nutyar is, they hear the voice of Ra when he calls out to the vicinity of this Nutyar. The name of the gate of this place is Position of the Nutyaru. The name of the cavern of this Nutyar is West. The name of the hour of the night guiding this great Nutyar is She Who Guides in the Midst of Her Bark. The secret paths of the West, gates through which the hidden is entered, the unapproachable place of the land of Sokar, flesh and body as the first manifestation. Knowledge of the Ba souls, which are in the Du'at, and their functions according to the book, what is in the hours, with their secret names. Unknown, unseen, imperceptible is this image of Haru himself. This is made like this image which is painted in the secrecy of the Du'at on the southern side of the hidden chamber. He who knows it, his Ba'asol is content, and he is satisfied with the offerings of Sokar. Hamit, she who overthrows, cannot cut his corpse. Offerings are made to them on earth. Upper Register The Upper Register starts with the Nutyat raising her arms and wearing a feather on her head. She is addressed as a Nyachart of the West by Ra and in the burial chamber of Men Shaparu Ra Jehutimos, also known as Tutmosis III. She follows immediately upon the last hour of the Amduat, thus starting the cycle again. She is followed by nine flags, nine hieroglyphs for Nyachart, the first of which with the white crown, the last with the red crown. They symbolize the great Ennead, but with Shapari in the place of a tomb and Haru in the place of Sotoch. She who is in the water of rejuvenation, southern divine symbol of Chapari, divine symbol of Shu, divine symbol of Tefnut, divine symbol of Geb, divine symbol of Nut, divine symbol of Ausir, divine symbol of Auset, divine symbol of Nethot, northern divine symbol of Haru of the Duat. Above the signs of the Nityaru there is one line. This task of these Nityaru in the Duat, they are like this. The text above the scene reads, Words spoken by this great Nityar, Nityar of the West, give your hand. Perfect is the great road which is in the earth, the way of the tombs, resting place of my Nityaru. You breathe, that Ennead of Nacharu, who came forth from my flesh, before your functions came into being. May your tasks endure, I protect you as you welcome me. You are the ones whom I commanded to be unapproachable when greeting me in the land of the West. Of the next four Nacharu, two are without attributes, the third has a hawk head, and the fourth a crocodile head. Although no water is shown here, the scene is a first formulation of the apotheosis by drowning, elaborated in the lower register of the tenth hour. He who belongs to the water of the drowned, guardian of the river banks, he with a living heart, the primeval one of the counter heaven. The text above the scene reads, Words spoken by this great Nichir, may you stand at your water, may you guard your river banks, May you give the flood to the floating ones in the noon, that you land them at the shores of the flood. Water belongs to you, it shall not dry up. May your riverbanks be high and not barren. May your arms bend for the waterfarer, Ra, to pass you in peace. They are those who belong to the waters of the drowned in the Duat. What they have to do is to let the bark come. In the center, after Anpu, we see the scarab Khabari emerging of the burial mound of Ausir, who is not shown, but to whom Auset and Nebthot as wailing birds belong. This is the chest guarded by Anpu and called Darkness, 
because at that same time it is another image of the whole dua in which Ra and Ausir are regenerated during the night, reappearing as a scarab in the morning. Anpu of the chest, darkness, Auset, Nebthot. Words spoken by this great Nitzchar. May you guard your chest. May your voice be loud and your throats truthful. May this image you guard be concealed. May you spread your wings and do your duties, that I may pass by you in peace. Beyond this mound, a two-headed serpent has no name but an accompanying text. Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nitzchar. O oh, unapproachable serpent, set apart your arm for me, and open your coils for me. May your arm be set apart, your coils open, and your two faces in the earth. Do not spit fire at me, nor shoot your arrows against those in my following, that I may pass by you in peace. He lives in the voice of Ra day after day, without going to any other place in the Du'at. He stays at the chest of Shabari. The next eight Nichiru belong together but are shown in different shapes, human-headed, with the head of a shrew, bull-headed, cow-headed, with the sign for shadow around his head, with an ostrich feather on his head, with two spirals in his hands, and ram-headed. Opposed to them, a Nichirut is seizing the figure of an enemy. He who satisfies the Nichiru, whom the Westerners fear, staff, Swallower, the Horned One, Bringer of Ma'at, Backward Facing, who catches with the lasso, the Ba'asol, who belongs to the Condemned, the Demolishing One, who cuts the Condemned to pieces. Line above the eight butchers. These are those who stand punishing the Condemned in the Du'a'at. What they have to do is to burn corpses of the condemned with the scorching breath of their mouths every day. Above the Nicharut, she lives from the blood of the condemned and from what these Nicharu provide her. He who knows her passes by her in peace. Text above the eight butchers. Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nichar. Oh, butchers belonging to the slaughter block who are busy punishing the condemned. May your words rise, and may your magic be brilliant. Efficiency for your ba souls. Strength for your power. Grind the enemies that you annihilate, the condemned, and cut down the shadows of the annihilated. Punished be all your condemned. You are the ones who address Ausir. May your knives be sharp, your slaughtering blocks violating and your ropes tight. May your arms hold fast on the images among which you are, that I may pass by you in peace. Middle Register The serpentine sunbark and its crew in the Middle Register is being towed by seven male and, beyond the mound with the head of Auset, by seven female deities, assisted by the scarab who grasps the towing rope from above. Thus we can feel the effort which is necessary to propel Ra through the dangerous narrow pass in the middle of this hour. With living ba souls, Wapau Wahwet, opener of the ways, Sia, percipients, Lady of the Bark, Flesh of Ra, Haru of the Fragrance, Bull of Ma'at, The Vigilant One, Hu, utterance, guide of the bark. This great Nutyar proceeds, being towed over this cavern in his bark which is in the earth, called with living ba souls. The Nutyaru of the Duat say to this great Nutyar, Welcome, welcome, Lord of Life! Welcome, pacifier of the West! Welcome, opener of the earth! Welcome, he who unlocks the earth! Welcome, who is in heaven! Welcome, pacifier of the counter heaven. Welcome, triumphant Ma'a Charu is the lord of the Ennead. Welcome, the earth opens her arms for you. The necropolis prepares its ways for you. The text above the seven towing deities. The Nuchiru of the Duat. 
What they have to do is to tow this great niche above the cavern of Sokar. You speak, Ra, to Ausir. You call, Ra, to the land of Sokar, and Haru upon his sand lives. Come to Chepari, Ra. Come, Ra, to Chepari. The rope which you have brought, the rope is raised to Chepari, that he extends a hand to Ra, that he paves the mysterious ways for Ra Heraachti. Heaven is in peace, in peace, and Ra belongs to the beautiful West. Text beside the head of Auset. Chepari. Flesh of Auset, who is upon the sand of the land of Sokar. Text between the scarab and the head of Auset. This Nutyar stops over the head of this Nutyar, Auset. He gives orders in the land of Sokar, day after day. It is Chepari, who is in the, his house, who adjusts the rope for towing over this cavern, that he may rest on the ways of the Dua'at. This great Nutyar says over this cavern, May you recognize this your image, Sokar, which is hidden in secret. I call to you that you be efficient. My words belong to you that you may rejoice over them. Auset belongs to your image, and the greatest Nutyar to your corpse, so that he may guard it. The line above seven towing Nutyar reads, The Nutyar who tow Ra in the Dua'at over this cavern. What they have to do is to tow this great Nutyar that he rests in his bark, which is in the noon, in the Dua'at. Text above the seven towing Nutyarut. Proceeding while being towed by the majesty of this great Nutyar, who is received by these Nutyarut. These Nutyarut say this to this great Nutyar, Ra comes in peace to the Dua'at. Prepared is the way of Ra in his bark, who is in the earth, in his body, his enemies are annihilated for you, who is in the west, Ra, that you may rest in it. You approach heaven as the greatest Ba'aso and master of the powers of the horizon. You are towed. Your towing succeeds. You are triumphant, Ma'acharu. Your enemies are driven off. Four Nucharu and Anucharu are shown in front of the tow rope. The first holds a staff, the second a wa'as scepter, the third, hawk-headed, a crook, and the fourth, a palm branch. The nutyart has no attributes. He above the forms, he who brings offerings, haru who belongs to the double heka'a scepter, he who commands, auset nutyart of the west. Text above nutyart. Words spoken by this great nutyart, Receive for you your staffs. Lean on your scepters. Support yourselves by your clubs. You stand because of your ba souls. You sit down because of your offerings. You are those belonging to the food and bread offerings. Lords of provisions in the West. Auset assigns you the West. She is content with you. Raise for me, you, in your forms, until I have passed by you in peace. They are like this. It is the assembly which distributes offerings in this cavern. Lower Register The Lower Register continues the secret paths of the fourth hour, again closed by two doors. Between the doors, the interior of Sokar's land is represented with the oval cavern of Sokar in the center, embedded in the two halves of the double sphinx, Akar, a nutyar of the earth name of the door. He who does not open to him who comes close to his image. Text in the way. Secret way of Amhat on which this Nityar is towed. It is the abomination of Nahas, Sajuch, gate of the west. The secret way of the land of Sokar, which Auset enters on, to be behind her brother. It is filled with flames of fire, from the mouth of Auset. The Nucharu and the Blessed Dead cannot proceed on it. The secret way of the land of Sokar and the Westerners who tow this Nucharu, upon which Nucharu, the Blessed and the Dead do not pass. It is filled with the flames of fire from the mouth of the Wa'amamti serpent. At the beginning of Sokar land, 
four divine heads with fire signs upon them appear. Heads of torches, they are behind this Nichir. What they have to do is to let the progress of his enemies go up in flames. A serpent from whose head emerges a baboon's head is crawling towards the oval. He with the unapproachable head, he lives by the voice of the Nicheru who are on earth. He enters and goes forth. He transmits the concerns of the living to this great Nichir day after day without being seen. Beside the two heads of Akkar, we find this text on both sides. Flesh of Akkar. He breathes through the voice of the great Nichir. What he has to do is to guard his image. In the oval, a hawk-headed Nichir grasps the wings of a serpent with three heads at one end and a human head at the other. This seems to be a form of the solar deity. Flesh of Sokar upon his sand winged serpent. He lives from the breath of his mouth day after day. What he has to do is guard his image. The great Nudshat who spreads his wings with multicolored plumes in the sand. Akar guarding the secret flesh. The land of Sokar. This image is like this in the unified darkness. The oval belonging to this Nudshat, Sokar, is illuminated by the two eyes of the heads of the great Nudshar, the serpent. His two feet shine in the coils of the great Nudshar while he protects his image. A noise is heard from this oval after this great Nudshar has passed by them, like the thundering sound of the sky in a storm. To the right of the oval, another serpent is crawling towards the following Nudshar. What Mamti, serpent? He lives from the blast of fire which is in his mouth. What he has to do is to guard the oval without going to any other place in the Duat. Four crouching Nicharu, the first two looking backwards, hold on their knees the fourfold divine headgear worn by the solar deity. White crown, red crown, ram's head, and double feather. Crowns are signs of power. They are essential in any renewal and the Nucharu are the four guardians of the crowns. Nucharu under the secret image of Sokar upon his sand. Their image is coming out of them from their own body. They are in the following of this great Nuchar, invisible and imperishable. The last door of the secret path is guarded by a serpent standing on its tail. Living Nuchar. He comes and he goes and he passes and he opens the knife door. Below the lower register, the lake of fire is indicated with waves, sometimes painted red to show the fiery character of this lake, which means painful punishment for the transgressors, but cool refreshment for the blessed dead, thus a union of fire and water. Waters which the Nucharu who are in Amhat mourn. The bark cannot pass by them, and those of the Duat cannot make use of their water which is in this Kharat Nichar their water being fire for those who are in it. Sixth Hour Here we approach midnight, and after the desert region of Sokar, we enter the water hole of those of the Duat, where the primeval ocean noon is present again, with all its regenerative power, which is necessary here to start a new life, when Ra unites himself with his corpse, thus rekindling his light. Introduction Pausing by the majesty of this great Nuchar, in the abyss, water hole of those of the Dua'at. This Nuchar commands that these Nucharu take possession of their divine offerings at this place. He proceeds in this place, equipped with his bark, and he assigns them their fields for their offerings. He grants them water from their waterway when he passes through the Duat day after day. The name of the gate of this place is With Sharp Knives. The name of the hour of the night which guides this great Nuchar is Arrival Who Gives the Right Way. The secret way of the west, on the water of which this great Nuchar proceeds in his bark, 
to care for the needs of those of the Duat. Pronounced by their names, known in their bodies, you graved by their forms are their hours, mysterious in their essence, without this secret image of the Duat being known by any human being. This image is made in paint like this in the secrecy of the Duat on the southern side of the hidden chamber. He who knows it will partake of the offerings to the Nucheru who are in the following of Ausir. All he wishes will be offered to him in the earth. Upper Register Many of the deities of this hour are shown in half-sitting position, indicating their renewed life, sitting up from their sleep of death. The first nine deities in the Upper Register have this position, and the text belonging to them stresses that they are well provided for by Ra. Accordingly, the first wears a loaf of bread and a jug of beer on his head, followed by a Nichart with the red crown and a Nichart without attributes. The fourth Nichart is hawk-headed, the fifth has the head of a baboon, and the sixth wears the white crown, possibly as another form of Ausir. The last three Nicharut are without attributes. Offerer who presides over the Duat. Auset of the Amhat. Ausir, favorite of the Nicharu. Haru, who presides over his field. Baboon belonging to his field. Renewed of heart presiding over his field. She of the land plots. She who unifies. She who satisfies the Nicharu. Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nichar to the Nicharu who are upon this field. O oh, seated ones who are in the Duat, you of the offerings who belong to their water holes. Offerings are yours that you be satisfied. Fields are yours of your offerings that you be satisfied with them day after day. You are those who are content with their needs, masters of arms with straight legs, loftiness to your forms, greatness to your manifestations, so that you are powerful and mighty, mighty and powerful. May you be powerful, Usar, by your necks, Usaru. May you be mighty, Sacham, by your scepters, Sachamu that you save Ausir from those who did that oppression and robbery against him. What they have to do in the Duat is to give offerings to the Nicharu of the Duat. Their offerings come into being at once as oblation meals due to the utterance of this great Nichar. Following are nine royal scepters, three with the white crown, three with the red crown, three with an Uraeus, and all with a knife at their lower end. According to their accompanying text, they obviously belong to the royal figures in the middle register. Shepherd's Crook Dew of the Earth Heka'a Scepter of the Dua'at Ma'at of the Nacharu Nurse of those in the Dua'at Waterway of Ta'achenin She who protects her Nacharu She who belongs to the heads of the Nacharu she who belongs to the fields of those of the Duat. The text reads, Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nichar to the commanding staffs of the kings of Upper and Lower Egypt who are in the Duat. Oh, renew yourselves, lift up the white crown, and wear the red crown among the Rachit people. Your fields belong to you from the Duat, in which your offerings come into existence. Justice to your commands, life to your ba souls and breath to your throats. You are the ones who came into existence on earth, who rejoice when my enemies are driven off. Their ba souls stand in the Duat upon their heka scepters. Their lower ends are knives. The robber, Soot, is aware of them. Facing these, we see a recumbent lion with two Uja'at eyes above him. Although a lion, he is called bull, since lion and bull are both symbols and signs of royalty. Behind them, a half-sitting Nichart is shown. Image of Ra, the bull with a roaring voice. Ausit Ta'ahit. 
The text reads, This is the divine eye of Ra. It is above the bull with roaring voice in the Dua Ahd. The bull with roaring voice rejoices when Ra rests upon his divine eye. The image of Auset Ta'it is close to this divine eye. The divine couple who follow this scene consists of a Nuchar wearing only a belt and a Nuchar holding a knife and a crook. Shining One She whom the Nucharu respect. The text reads, Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nuchar. O oh, Radiant One, guard your image. O oh, you Nuchar whom the Nucharu respect. Give respect by your staffs of command. May your images be hidden. May their darkness be illuminated. May his, Ausir's, limbs breathe, the flesh which you protect, when I pass by you in peace. Three chests, each with an opening under the top, through which a guardian serpent spits, fire, contain the threefold burial of Ra, hind part of a lion, wing of the scarab, and human head. Each chest is also provided with a sun disk and a knife. Behind the chests stands a Nuchart, whose eye spits fire, tomb house which Soot adores, whose tongue spits fire, tomb house of the towing of Shari Ah, he with high flame, tomb house that unites Haru. A doratress belonging to the beginning of the tombs, houses. Text with this scene. Words spoken by this great Nuchar in the vicinity of this mysterious image of the Dua'at. Illuminated is the darkness in the earth. The flesh roars with joy, and the head speaks after he has united his members. These are the mysterious images of the Dua'at. Those who are on their bellies i.e. serpents, are their guardians. When Ra illuminates their darkness, the head speaks after the divine adoratress has called to him. Middle Register The sun bark in the middle register has regained her usual appearance as in the third hour. Bark of Ra Wapau Wa'ahwet Opener of the ways Sia Percipients Lady of the bark Flesh of Ra, Haru of Fragrance, Bull of Ma'ahat, The Vigilant One, Ho Utterance, Guide of the Bark. Text above the boat, This great Nichar sails in this region on the water. He rows through this field to the place of the corpse of Ausir. This great Nichar addresses the Nicharu who are in this field when he has moored at these mysterious tombs which contain the image of Ausir. This Nuchyat calls out above these mysterious tombs, houses, and it is his voice which this Nuchyat hears. Then he passes on after he is called out. The enthroned baboon-headed Nuchyat is Jehuti, presenting an ibis to a Nuchyat who is hiding two eyes of Ra behind her. Jahuti, who presides over the water hole of the Dua'at. She who hides her images. Text above the scene. It is the majesty of this Nuchar who makes the riverbanks firm for these Nucharu of this region in the Dua'at. Ra says to this Nuchar, May your actions endure, may your magical spells endure. The concealing one guides you on your fields by means of the secret eye which she has hidden. Concealing one, may your arms be hidden, being bare. Following are sixteen standing mummies in groups of four. The first group wearing the white crown, being the kings of Upper Egypt. The second group is without attribute. The third group wears the red crown as kings of Lower Egypt. And the fourth group, also without attribute, is called Achu the usual name for the blessed dead. Nesu, king of Upper Egypt. Those provided with offerings. Biti, king of Lower Egypt. Ach, spirit. Text above the scene. This Nuchyar commands to present divine offerings to the Nuchyaru of the Dua'at. When he approaches them, they see him 
and take possession of their fields. Their offerings then become manifest by order of this great Nichir to them. Abyss, water hole of those of the Du'at, is the name of this field. It is the path of the bark of Ra. Text belonging to the mummies. The majesty of this great Nichir speaks to the kings of Upper Egypt and to the Ach spirits who are in this place. Your kingship is yours, kings of Upper Egypt. May you receive your white crown on your heads. You are content, provided with offerings. Your red crown belongs to you, kings of Lower Egypt. Your Ach quality belongs to you, Ach spirits. Your divine offerings belong to you, that you may be content, and you dispose of your Ba'ah souls, that you may be strong. You are kings of your region, and you rest in your fields. You unite with the mystery in your lower Egyptian crown. You are efficient because of your magic spells. You are those who are content with offerings which divine utterance has given to you. You are those who have rendered homage to me on earth and have punished Ahabi. The kings of Upper Egypt, those provided with offerings, the kings of Lower Egypt, and the Ach spirits who are in the earth, they are like this. They stand at their caverns and they listen to the words of this Nichyar day after day. At the end of the register, a five-headed serpent encloses the corpse of Ra as Khabari with a scarab over his head. The corpse is supine, but not mummiform. Many-faced. Flesh. The text runs, This is the corpse of Khabari as his own flesh. Many-faced guards him. He is like this. His tail is in his mouth. What he has to do, he is stretched out beneath this image. The entire West comes to him while he cannot go to any other place of the Du'at. The voice of Ra is what comes to the image which is in him. Lower Register The lower register is framed by the crocodile-headed, half-sitting Nichir who can be identified with Sopek, master of all waters and with Noon as guardian of this hour, the Nutcher of the primeval ocean, and thus of the world before creation, in which Ra is daily regenerated. Together with Sobek, the crocodile-headed Nutcher forms a couple, representing the fertile and rejuvenated water which fills the depth of the Du'at. The next six Nutcheru have no attributes, followed by four half-sitting Nutcherut who begin to be delivered from their handicaps. Crocodile, she who is in the great noon. Ahi, son of Chothat. He who cries, protector of his father, with living face, with speaking face. Protector, she who is fettered, she who is held back, she who is turned about, she who is burdened. The text reads, Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nutyar to these Nutyaru. O oh, Nutyaru in the Du'at, followers of the water hole of those of the Du'at, standing ones and seated ones of noon, who is in their field. You are the Nutyaru, whose heads shine and whose corpses stand. You are those Nutyarut who set back behind Khapari, to the place which contains his corpse in the Du'at. May your faces live, may your hearts breathe, and may your darkness be illuminated. May you dispose of water for yourselves, and may you be content with your offerings, going forth for your Ba'ah souls, that they may pass behind me. My Ba'ah soul is with me, that I may alight on my corpse. I pass by you in peace. They hear the words of Ra day after day, and they breathe through his voice. What they have to do in the Du'a'ah, to conduct the Ba'ah souls and let the shadows alight, and to secure the water supply of the Ach spirits. Next is a serpent with four human heads coming out of its body. The heads are attributed to the four children of Haru, who are the tutelary deities of the internal organs and heard separately from the mummy. Thus it seems that this serpent belongs to the burial of Ra, distributed over all three registers although the text is not explicit about this, but speaks about fighting the enemies. Swallower of Forms Amsechi Ha'api Duamotef 
Habah Sanuf, whom this great Nichar does not see. These images in his coils breathe when they hear the voice of this great Nichar day after day. What he has to do in the Du'at, to swallow the shadows and to wipe out the figures of the foes, those overthrown in the Du'at. The four Nichiru in half-raised position are again afflicted with different handicaps like the four Nichiru before, but addressed separately. He who is constricted, sore foot, footless, he who is weary. Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nichiru to those of the Nichiru. Stand up indeed, yield not, stretch out and be not weary. May your ba souls emerge and may your shadows rest stretching for your feet and straightness for your knees. May you indeed rest in your flesh. Unbound are your wrappings. They live from the voice of this great Nichar day after day. What they have to do is to make he of the horizon, Achti, come. The register ends in front of the Nichar noon, facing them, with nine fire-spitting serpent staffs, each with a knife at the lower end to threaten the enemies. They symbolize the Nichiru of the great Ennead, without the Nichiru. Tatyanin, a tomb, Chepari, Shu, Geb, Ausir, Haru, the judge, Jehuti, Hotepi, he of the offerings. Words spoken by the majesty of this great Nichiru to the staffs of the Nichiru in this region. O oh, staffs of the great Ennead, images of him who has created his Nicharu. May your faces burn and may your knives be sharp, that you may consume the enemies of Chepari and cut their shadows. You are those attached to the mysterious body whose places Nun has made. You are those in the water of Ta'achinin who came into existence and protect Chepari. They breathe through the voice of Ra day after day what they have to do in the Dua'at, to roast the dead and to deliver the Ba'a souls into the place of destruction. 